Welcome back to CEO Money. Michael Yorba here with Andrew Kernan and Mervyn Price. All right, uh, our next guest is Alex Ochoa. He is a CEO and president and director of One Tower Wireless, OneTowerWireless.com. Alex, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. All right, Alex, let me back up a little bit and give you a chance to tell our listening audience who you are uh, uh, and and really what One Tower One Wireless does. Great. So basically, Tower One Wireless is focused on the construction and development of cellular towers uh, in Latin America. We're currently operating in Colombia and Argentina, where what we basically do is lease out tower space for the mobile operators. Similar to a Telus or a Rogers, in those countries, they're basically known as Cero, Telefonica, and other which are multi-billion market cap companies and uh, are basically our tenants on, on long-term leases. Okay. Alex, if, if you are on a speakerphone, uh, please uh, take us off the speakerphone so we can get a better audio on you. Okay? Sure. All right. That sounds much better. I'm actually down in Columbia. Uh, <laughs> pardon me? I'm down in Columbia. Maybe we should place this cell phone power here. Yeah, you are. Oh, okay. Well, you sound pretty good for being in Columbia. All right. So, how long has your company been in business? And let's let, let me open this up and uh, let let Merv come in with a couple of questions too. So, our, our company was basically founded in 2015 with uh, a series of individuals that come from the cell phone power uh, industry. Um, one of our members is the ex-CEO of uh, T-Mobile and has uh, nice experience in the space. I helped fund it and uh, sold three other cell phone power companies in the past. And uh, what made us make the decision to go in public was that today there are no entry points for investors to get into what I like to call a specialty real estate or vertical real estate. Um, today, basically, there's only three large publicly traded organizations and the rest are private equity, but there's no small mid-cap uh, cell phone power companies out there, and that's how we launched our company at the beginning of this year. Alex, just a quick one. This is Mervyn speaking. Apart from being super cool, and you've got a double header, Columbia's super cool, and apart from being super cool, towers are super cool, but what makes them uh, so attractive to, what's, what makes that industry attractive to an investor? What are the, what are the features and benefits? So basically what makes it interesting is, number one, it's basically real estate or vertical real estate. They're long-term leases, AAA tenants, and basically a cash-on-cash um, return of usually 20% per annum on a rental basis. So what that means is we build a tower for about fifty to $70,000 per tower, and with one cell phone operator, we receive anywhere between a thousand to a thousand five hundred per tower, um, and those are basically contracts uh, for long-term leases um, with no operating. So it's different than regular real estate where you have both electric, plumbing, and other types of, of worries. Here you have a triple, uh, it's a tenant for a ten-year term with a ten-year option. So what makes it interesting is basically you're in a hard asset with a great tenant, good yields, and the ability that after you have one tenant, you can always add a second and a third operator to the same cell phone tower. So in essence, you can almost double to triple those yields by attracting a second operator, which is where the industry is going. For years, the cell phone operators uh, thought that having more cell phone towers meant getting an edge on their competitors. Today, uh, the focus is geared, been geared towards more of the plans that are offered to clients, the content that's offered to clients, and not so much the infrastructure. The infrastructure that they develop today um, ranges not only in, in cell phone coverage, but also cell phone capacity. Many people ask the question, why cell phone towers today if it's already been an industry that's been around for ages? What they don't realize is that much of that demand is in parallel to the increased need for data. Well, so Alex, you, you, we used to have, 
Alex, wow. you're, Alex, you're also in an emerging market in Colombia and Argentina. Oh, do you have any plans for any other South American countries? Yeah, so I think that basically I look at Latin America as a regional basis. I think what, what we're looking at doing next is launching Mexico, which we, we should be finally putting together and finalizing by the end of uh, next quarter. Um, these emerging countries, specifically Argentina, give us a, a large upside, and here's why. Argentina has been basically out of business for the last 12 years. With that existing government that was in place, the reality was no investor was going into that country. Since the new president came in, Mauricio Macri, basically the influx of, of foreign investment has been quite large. And what we have are dollar-denominated contracts with tenants such as Claro, which are better known as America Mobile or Carlos Slim, or oh. Telefonica, which are you know multinational organizations in, in that country. So the need for cell phone towers in Argentina is large. Other competitors have come out to the market saying that there's a need of more than 10,000 new towers to cover the, the necessities. Excuse so me, Ale Alex, did you, you be, Alex, did you say 10,000? 10,000 new towers. And there's $70,000 a tower? I'm just doing some quick math. That's correct. Who are the major players in this space, Alex? The larger players in this space include American Towers, SBA, and Crown Castle. American Towers is a large organization that's been in the space for more than 10 years um, and has been active not only in the U.S., but basically globally. What we've decided to do when we started was basically pick out niches where we thought we had more of a competitive advantage. So if you take the case of Argentina, we were in Argentina a year and a half before American Towers was. Uh, and on, on one of the more recent bids, the bid was awarded to basically four tower companies. Three of the four are American Towers, SBA, and Tower One Wireless. So I think if somebody wants to look at our company and compare it versus the more mature tower companies in the space, Argentina was a, is a, a special place to do that. Um, let me run in here just just a second here, uh, Alex. Your symbol on the uh, Canadian exchange is, is TO, correct? That's correct. All right. Why aren't there more publicly traded companies in the cell tower industry? The need or the, the, the specific reason for that is the following. The majority of the, the actors have built a business model that attends to building and selling out to an American Towers or an SBA, right? The majority of the groups that are involved are private equity backed, yet none of them are publicly traded. And the main reason when you look at each of these countries is that there is a handful, if not a dozen cell phone operators or cell phone power builders um, per country. In Argentina, there's only five at the moment. So it's a very niche business. Right? The cell phone operators don't want hundreds or thousands of cell phone power providers. They have a handful of these guys that they pick. Um, so there's not a, there's a high entry to bear, a high barrier to entry to getting into this business. What helped us was I had already built two of these companies before, and all the guys that I have attracted to the team are industry professionals that come from the cell phone power space. So it's a continuous uh, relationship with the cell phone operators. I think it's also a great opportunity for the, for the operators in country because they've realized that everyone's model is to basically sell out to one of my competitors. Our business is to stay and lease these towers for as long as the contract lasts. We have no intention of selling our towers to third parties. So that message has resonated across many of the cell phone operators, and they feel that having a, a mix of landlords, if you wish, that have different incentives when that time for the extension of the contract comes is going to help their business and not put them in a corner with just negotiating with one landlord. That's good answer. Good answer. Andy, you have any questions? Yeah, sure. Um, I really like your triple bottom line consisting of people, planet, and profit. Um, the idea of bringing um, data and internet to these emerging third world countries, uh, it just it seems really exciting expanding down there. Your mobile uh, towers, um, are you just leasing them to the providers um, or do you actually provide the cellular equipment that's on the towers? 
No, we basically lease just the tower itself. So, like, I like to put it in terms. I have the empty apartment unit. The operator can decide what soap, uh, house, or kitchen they want to design and put in there. So there's no technology, um, you know, issues or, or problems that we'll ever face. We're just the physical infrastructure itself. Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei, the others that actually provide the equipment would be installed on our towers and maintained by either third parties or the mobile operator themselves, not by us. Got it. Got it. Alex, I want to thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate this. Uh, uh, symbol, again, T-O. Are there any other listings you may come out on with your uh, with your stock? Yeah, we have a listing in the U.S. and also in uh, Germany. And the symbols there? T-O-W-T-F. And the German one is a number I can't even remember. Okay. All right, Alex, thanks for being a guest on our show. I really appreciate that. Uh, Looking forward to hearing from you again. Thank you. All right, Alex Ochoa, he is the CEO and director of uh, One, excuse me, Tower One Wireless, TowerOneWireless.com. On the other side of this break, we're going to come back with Glenn Bierman, CEO, Tycon Partners, Partners. Thank you. You've been listening to CEO Money with Andrew Kernan. Mervyn Price and Michael Yorba will be right back. 